Hello, and welcome to episode 123 of Rivers Arcade Review. My name is Ed. This channel is dedicated to the coin-operated video games of yesteryear. Today I'll be reviewing a favorite of mine, Cloak & Dagger. Cloak & Dagger was released in 1983 by Atari. My first time playing this game was at Funtime Square in hometown Illinois. Cloak & Dagger is an action shooter game in which you control the character Agent X with two 8-way joysticks, one for movement and one for firing, and an igniter button. You need to guide Agent X to a series of underground rooms in an attempt to recover the top secret plans that were stolen by Dr. Boom. The game begins with a level select screen. You can choose to begin on the ground level, level 5, or level 9, although if the previous game ended on a higher level than level 9, you will be able to begin on a level higher than 9, although you can't begin above level 29. You will earn an express bonus for beginning on higher levels, although you will only earn the bonus if you clear the first level you select. Once you select your beginning level, the game begins. If you begin on the first level, you will have a short cutscene in which Dr. Boom runs past you with the stolen plans. He will enter a secret passage under a tree and Agent X will follow him. After you enter the entrance, you will find yourself in an elevator going down to sub-level 1. Once the door is open, you will find yourself amid a series of conveyor belts inside of a cave-like structure. You need to make your way across the floor into the exit on the opposite side of the playfield. There will be a series of enemy robots that will move across the playfield and shoot at you. You need to avoid or shoot these robots because if they contact or shoot your character, you will lose a life. In addition to the enemy robots, there will be red canisters moving along the conveyor belts. You can shoot these canisters for extra points. Shooting one of the red explosive canisters will cause it to explode and the explosion can destroy the neighboring canisters in a chain reaction. In addition to the red canisters, there will be four other type of canisters moving around the conveyor belts. The first type of canisters will be green. The green canisters are unarmed explosives. You can safely collect these canisters for points, although if you shoot them, you will earn less points. The next item on the conveyor belts will be a white cube with the letter S on it. You need to collect this cube to gather the secret maps for the next minefield level. Each level will have one piece of the map and you will need to collect three maps to show the entire way through the minefield safely. The minefield levels will be covered later in this video. The next item on the conveyor belts will be the brown canisters. Collecting these canisters will give you one of four mystery awards. The awards you can receive will be bonus points, slowing down your character, double speed for your character, and an extra life. The final item you will occasionally find on the conveyor belts will be another white cube, although this time there will be a letter X on it. Collecting this cube will award you an extra life. In addition to the conveyor belts and enemies, there will be a large bomb in the center of the playfield. This bomb will have a fuse that will encircle it twice. The fuse will immediately begin burning once the level begins. You need to reach the exit at the opposite side of the playfield before the fuse burns down to the bomb, because once the fuse burns out, the bomb will explode, destroying the entire floor, and if you are not on the elevator, you will lose a life. You can also use the igniter button to ignite the bomb's fuse, causing it to burn faster, which will give you more bonus points. You need to make sure that you have a clear path to the exit before igniting the fuse or you'll get caught by the explosion and cost you a life. Once you reach the exit, you will once again find yourself in the elevator and you will be lowered to the second sub-level where you'll face a new layout of conveyor belts as well as a second enemy robot. Other than the different layout, the gameplay will be the same. Reaching the level 2 exit will bring you back to the elevator and you'll be lowered to sub-level 3. Once again, you'll have a new layout of conveyor belts, but now there will be a new enemy. This enemy will be the forklift. The forklifts will be blue and will move the canisters around the playfield. Not only are the forklifts invincible, but they will reflect your shots, so you need to be careful because if you shoot one when they are lined up with your character, your shot will ricochet back at you, and if it hits you, you will lose a life. Once you reach level 4, you will face a new challenge. Not only will you face the enemies you faced in the previous levels, but there will be mines spread across the playfield. These mines will be invisible, although they will flash every time you shoot something. This is where the secret maps you collected in previous levels will come into play. If you have collected the maps, there will be arrows showing a safe path through the mines. If you haven't collected all three maps, only the sections collected will show the arrows. The mine levels will begin on level 4 and appear every four levels thereafter. As the levels continue, the enemies will not only be faster, but there will be more of them and new ones also. The first new enemy will be the giant crawling eye monster. This monster will show up on level 5 and will shoot lasers at your character trying to destroy you. You must shoot or avoid the crawling eye monster because if it shoots or contacts you, you will lose a life. You need to shoot these creatures three times to destroy them. 
Beginning with level 6, there will be several items placed behind walls you can't just walk up and collect. You are able to shoot through the walls in order to create a path to access these items. Level 6 will also contain lava pits. You must avoid these lava pits because contacting one will cost you a life. Beginning with level 7, you must shoot through the walls to make it to the exits. Level 8 will be another minefield level, although this time there will be even more mines so it will be more important to collect all the secret maps. Level 9 will add a new device you will have to contend with. This new item will arm the explosive devices. Anytime a green canister enters one of these devices, it will exit as an armed red explosive canister which now must be shot or avoided. Level 12 will be another minefield level, although with even more mines. Beginning on level 13, some of the conveyor belts will cross over each other. Due to the crossover conveyor belts, occasionally the canisters will become backed up. This can cause issues crossing the playfield when a series of red explosive canisters line up that it can prevent you from crossing safely. Level 16 will be another minefield with even more mines. Beginning with level 17, you will now need to deal with the box compressors. The compressors will be surrounding the conveyor belts and will open and close in a predictable pattern. Every time the compressor closes then reopens, a green canister will emerge from it. There will be one set of compressors in each corner of the playfield. You need to cross these compressors when they are open or they will crush you and cost you a life. Level 18 will have two compressors in each corner and level 19 will have three compressors in each corner of the playfield. Level 20 will once again be a minefield level with more mines. Levels 21 through 23 will have more conveyor belts, enemy robots and crawling eye monsters making it harder to cross the playfield. Level 24 will be another minefield level. Level 25 will have three lava pits on both ends of the playfield. You need to ride the conveyor belt between the lava pits to avoid losing a life. Levels 26 and 27 will have even more lava pits, although now you will need to change conveyor belts to make it safely across the playfield. Level 28 will be another minefield level, although this time you will also need to navigate through the lava pits. Level 29 will consist of many conveyor belts as well as robots, crawling eye monsters, and bomb arming devices. Level 30 is the level in which you have a wall that will block your way to the exit. Just like before, you need to shoot a pathway to make it through. Level 31 will have crawling eyes as well as box compressors in addition to the other enemies. Level 32 will be another minefield level. Clearing level 32 will bring you to Dr. Boom's lab. This floor will not have a bomb in the center. Instead of the bomb, there will be the stolen secret plans. You need to collect the plans before you exit the play field, although there is more to it. There will be a force field surrounding the plans. There will be eight pylons generating this force field. You need to destroy these pylons to move the force field away from the plan so you can safely grab them. It takes two shots to destroy each pylon. You don't need to destroy all the pylons to grab the plans, but just enough for the force field to move away enough to grab the plans. In addition to the force fields protecting the plans, there will be two sets of force fields in the bottom corners. These force fields will each be protecting a white X cube. Collecting each of these boxes will earn you an extra life. In addition, there will be two Y-shaped conveyor belt setups. Approximately every 5 seconds, these conveyor belts will produce a new enemy robot. Even though there is no bomb in Dr. Boom's hideout, your time isn't unlimited. After approximately 25 seconds, the entire floor will become electrified, causing you to lose a life. After you collect the plans and escape the level, you will now need to take the elevators up to the surface. You will play the levels in reverse order of how you face them on the way down. On the way up, there will no longer be bombs in the center of the playfield, and there will no longer be maps for the minefields. If you are able to reach ground level, you will get the congratulations screen and you will be rewarded with the free game, although management has the option to turn the free game off. After the congratulations screen, you will be shown the top secret plans on screen. Occasionally, Dr. Boom will appear at the beginning of the level and he will throw bombs at your character. You need to avoid these bombs because they are indestructible. You can shoot Dr. Boom for extra points. While you are in the elevator, you can pull down on both joysticks to skip levels. You can skip up to three levels, although you can't skip past the minefield levels. You need to use caution when skipping the levels because you will not be able to collect the secret maps for the minefields. You will earn bonus points for skipping levels. You can skip levels moving both up and down. During the elevator cutscenes, Agent X won't just stand there, but he will randomly wink at you, flip a coin, or pull a yo-yo out and flip it up and down. You also have the ability to control some of the cutscenes. If you wait until the level explosion is near the exit door, Agent X will have a burn hat or will have a red face that will gradually return to its natural color. This game was originally named Agent X, although it was changed to Cloak and Dagger to correspond with the release of the movie of the same name.
Scenes from this game can be seen during the movie, although it was said to be played on an Atari 5200, although it was never released for any home platform. Scoring for the game is as follows. You will earn 1 point for each piece of wall you shoot away, 10 points for shooting the green canisters, and 200 points for shooting each force field generating pylon. You will earn 50,000 points for shooting Dr. Boom, 100,000 points for collecting the secret plans, and between 2,000 and 9,000 points for lighting the fuse based on how much fuse is left when you do so. You will earn points twice for the following items. You will earn 50 points for shooting the red bomb canisters, 100 points for collecting the green canisters, between 200 and 1800 points for collecting the brown canisters, and 200 points for shooting the enemy robots. You will also earn a 100 point bonus for each of these items you collect or destroy, although you will only earn the bonus when you clear the level, but you will lose any bonus points accumulated if you lose a life. You will earn 1000 points for shooting the crawling eye monster, and 2000 points for shooting the super robot. You will also receive a 200 point bonus for each of these enemies destroyed, although just like before you will only receive the bonus if you clear the level. If you light the bomb fuse, all further points will be doubled. I really enjoyed playing this game and highly recommend playing it whether in an arcade cabinet or on an emulator. I like this game more than Major Havoc, but not as much as Galaga, so Cloak and Dagger sneaks its way into the 32nd position overall. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any games you'd like me to review, please leave a message below or on my homepage. Please remember hit like, share, and subscribe, and stay tuned to new videos every Sunday.